Good morning, folks. Welcome back to the Philosophy for Philistines channel. I apologize, I have not uh, made a vlog in the last eight days, and I thought it was time to do one in honor of my uh, previous format of trying to do a Sunday sermon, where I'll try to share the truth with you without ever passing the offering plate. So the title of the book that I am writing is called 365 Meditations, A Counter Agent to Tyranny. And I will read to you my installments for the last two days, day nine and day 10. From day nine, ideological possession is what ancient man knew as demon possession. Man does not make his ideas. We could say that man's ideas make him. By Dr. Carl Jung in Freud and Psychoanalysis. From an article dated April the 8th, 2021 in the National Post, Rex Merck, the writing in defense of Dr. Jordan B. Peterson stated, these are the scourge of identity politics, environmentalism as a substitute religion, the pernicious notion of collective guilt, anti-white fulminations, and the repression of free speech that shelters under the ludicrous banners of safe spaces and the speech is violence mantra. To this litany of malefactions, he added praise for and recommended the current outrageous idea of personal responsibility. Dr. Peterson's daring expose on postmodernism and of neo-Marxism's neo-Marxism, -Marxism, prevalent effect on our society has made him the numero uno target of the radical alt-left. As Rex stated, Dr. Peterson has had the temerity to assert that individual accountability is a fundamental building block of a free society. In response, the radical alt-left has been merciless in waging a constant personal attack against Dr. Peterson. Had they dealt with him in kind, they would have used ethics and epistemology to engage him in rational debate. But the hard left is not interested in debating. Far from it, actually. They prefer to use their postmodern version of literary criticism as a hammer to crush all dissenting opinion. Just to state that these attacks are assault on reason itself is obvious given that they originate from an ideology completely foreign to the traditions of Western philosophy. There is a certain hysteric quality about the radical alt-left's ideological possession, which our ancestors would have labeled as demonic because they would have no other way of describing the mass psychic epidemic that we are witnessing. When a society en masse becomes blind to the mojo of their time, with few knowing or caring what the source of their social zeitgeist is, they are likely to fall prey to all manner of idea pathogens, which will lead not merely to social decay, but ultimately to murderous ruin. Given the totalitarian madness that swept Europe in the mid-20th century, many of you may have older relatives still living who lived through this horror. Let's examine the result of the prevalent mind pathogen of fascism, Nazism, no one knew what was happening to him, least of all the Germans, who allowed themselves to be driven to the slaughterhouse by their leading psychopaths like hypnotized sheep. From Carl Jung's After the Catastrophe, today we are controlled by ideas the origin of which we have no knowledge. We simply accept them unquestioningly. We give the source of the ideas which occupy our minds little thought. Psychiatrist Silvano, Silvano Arietti was one of the world's 
foremost authorities on schizophrenia, who received his medical degree from the University of Pisa, only to leave Italy shortly after due to Benito Mussolini's anti-Semitic racial policies. Arietti warned about allowing others' ideas to control your thinking. If he controls your ideas, he will soon control your actions, because every action is preceded by an idea, from Dr. Arietti's The Will to be Human. Russian author Fyodor Dostoevsky labeled toxic ideas as demons. Richard Peaver wrote in his preface to Dostoevsky's novel Demons, throughout Dostoevsky's work exists the possibility of an evil or alien idea coming to inhabit a person, misleading him, perverting him, ontologically, driving him to crime or insanity. The person born of the idea may be distorted and even destroyed by it. We need to exorcise these pathological entities which capture, inhabit, and possess the minds of men. Ancient man understood the need for such, yet we have come to deem him to have held primitive superstitions for believing that people can be possessed by pathological psychic phenomena. Nevertheless, Today we can clearly see such psychic phenomena manifesting themselves, which are the result of pathological ideas undermining social order as they erode the very ethical foundations of civil society. And from today, day 10, Jungian archetypes and the collective unconscious, disabusing, disabusing the postmodern hard alt-left types that man is born, tabula rasa. One of the most obvious reasons, at least to me, that the hard alt left hate Dr. Jordan B. Peterson as much as they do, is that he is a Jungian psychologist who uses deeply metaphorical truths to reveal the nature of our shared humanity. Carl Jung asserted that this subconscious nature is heritable and that we have identical identical psychic structures common to all, which influence the way we experience the world. The first and most important assertion I will make today is that these inherited subconscious structures render Nietzsche's belief we must create a superhuman ubermensch a psychological impossibility. Mankind cannot create his own value structure. Since such structures are inherited, and reside deeply within our collective unconsciousness. Jung's archetypes subconsciously influence our lives, our relationship to how we perceive the symbols which help explain the archetypes, and the connection between our religious experiences and these archetypes. The postmodern neo-Marxism of the hard left is simply one more attempt at forcing people to supersede their own collective unconsciousness, the inevitable result of which will cause a psychic epidemic of dysfunction and mass hysteria. Young student Eric Newman made an analogy of our body's component parts to illustrate the role of the archetypes in creating a healthy, complete individual. Our body and all its organs were formed in the womb, in like manner so our minds possess psychic organs which determine their structure. And these psychic organs are the archetypes. Since our physical organs mostly operate without requiring our conscious awareness, so do the archetypes. And since our physical self cannot be healthy without all of our component parts functioning well, neither can a healthy mind function well without the proper functioning of the archetypes. As Newman explains, the archetypal structure, structural elements of the psyche are psychic organs upon which, upon whose functioning the well-being of the individual depends, and whose injury has disastrous consequences from the origins and history of consciousness 
by Eric Newman. Understanding the archetypes requires the use of symbols, since their rep representation cannot be understood by the conscious mind. The symbols must be used to approach the ar archetype from several angles, so may we may come to a fuller understanding of the underlying archetype. Everyone, and indeed every culture, will perceive these archetypes differently, yet they do not vary chaotically in their form. The self archetype holds the key to all other archetypes, or as Edward Edinger reveals, there is a wide array of symbols manifested by the self. The self is expressed by a certain typical symbolic images called mandalas. All images that emphasize a circle with a center and usually with the additional feature of a square cross or some other representation of quaternity fall into this category. There are also a number of other associated themes and images that refer to the self, such themes as wholeness, totality, the union of opposites, the central point, the word, world navel, the axis of the universe, the elixir of life, all refer to the self, the central source of life energy, the fountain of our being, which is most simply described as God. Indeed, the richest source of the phenomenological study of the self are in the innumerable representations that man has made of the deity. From Ego and Archetype by Edward Edinger. Postmodern Neo-Marxism is an attack on the self aimed at rendering the discovery of life's deepest meanings an impossibility. The Mandela symbol is rep a representational image of where the real self meets the transcendent. A cross is a type of Mandela. Jesus himself spoke in imagery and parables because he was pointing us toward truths the conscious mind alone cannot grasp. I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you look forward to reading uh, the book that I'm writing of Daily Meditations as much as I'm enjoying writing it. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next time right here at the Philosophy for Philistines channel where I'll never pass the offering plate.